So good, good afternoon. My name is Tim Miller, and I um, have come here from New Zealand. Um, I would like to present two areas of our re research into 4D printing, dynamic uh, movement inspired by natural living systems, and printing, um, additive, uh, printing uh, active metamaterials. Uh, but before I start, I would like to say I am delighted to be here, and uh, many thanks to Philip and the uh, organizing committee for the invitation uh, to share our research. My colleagues, Ross Stevens um, and uh, Bernard Guy, uh, and myself have uh, supervised, many of these, uh, su supervised many of these projects, with Emilio Callias, uh, who's an engineer, uh, Callahan, uh, researching uh, with myself, um, and we've been looking at metamaterials. Um, so when, you, when scanned, uh, the made uh, academics look uh, depressingly similar, not very animated at all. Um, we are a team of uh, industrial designers uh, interested, in, uh, in, um, interested in the aesthetics of 3D printing by exploring uh, systems of digital modeling and 3D printing processes uh, producing novel design outcomes. Our research is through multi-property um, multi additive manufacturing design experiments. Uh, more often than not, uh, these include 4D printing, 3D printed objects with a consideration of time and dynamic changes that may occur by programming matter uh, responsibly, um, or matter response, uh, which uh, by association includes movement, function, uh, functional reaction, performance, choreography, and aesthetic uh, ex expression. Through multi-material printing uh, on our new J750 machine, we explore the design opportunities these new forms of materiality facilitate. From six base materials um, on our polyjet machine uh, allows us to digitally mix um, hard and soft materials uh, to produce a range of uh, flexibilities from uh, soft to uh, stiff. Um, and with these materials and color combinations, there are over 360,000 uh, choices of material. Um, back in 2012, uh, we were limited to um, black rubber-like material and a clear hard material um, in the same print. Unhindered by this, Richard Clarkson uh, explores the technology of the time and designs Blossom, a field of interactive pneumatic flowers with dynamic petals. Um, the design of the uh, envelope um, and the regions of hard hardness um, end up allowing uh, for the form of an inflated animation. Um, I must apologize for the clipping of the videos. Uh, they've all been clipped in order to shorten this presentation. Um, the uh, um, Combination, uh, combining pneumatics and the subtleties of slow material um, inversion, sorry, uh, slow material inversion, uh, Mark Wilson created beautiful, delicate movement, and with the slightest of tender interaction, creates a delightful reaction, perhaps inspired by the intimacy of this within uh, Philip Beasley Vesico. Um, giving, uh, more, uh, uh, pros, uh, um, giving more purpose to 4D printing, my colleague Ross Stevens and Bernard Guy um, have been exploring animation uh, through the proposed, um, proposed and uh, created computer-generated objects. Rather than through time-consuming uh, CGI, I should have played, um, CGI, uh, the animation has been done through objects. Skillfully choreography uh, brought, uh, brought a series of printed aquatic creatures to life uh, that interact with the fluidity of their environment. Um, taking this further, 
uh, this theme further. Nicole Hone, in her recent master's uh, thesis project, Hydrophytes, Tangible Animation, uses form and materiality um, to develop uh, futuristic creatures that inhabit this aquatic world. Um, with the use of uh, pro projection and animated light, um, she gave um, them vis viscous uh, range of attributes. So that's uh, the computer-generated objects. Um, since 2012 um, 12 and 13, we've been uh, refining material distribution to gain functional performance. Like Skylight Tibbets, we talk about programmable materials um, developed, uh, and developed systems towards metamaterials. Using Rhino and Grasshopper um, and bitmap images in stack sequence, uh, to produce uh, gradients of materiality with functional will, function and programmable performance. Interestingly, a, a stacked bitmap method is, uh, is used in the latest voxel printing system. Uh, metamaterials are synthetic composite materials with internal geometry structural um, that, uh, um, uh, that we show here um, by dynamically increasing the size. Uh, many, including all zutic materials, um, have uh, revealed their hidden properties through movement, often exhibiting dimensional change in unexpected manners and direction. Pentamode structures, um, uh, pentamode structures are a class of metamaterials having an extremely small shear modulus but, uh, whilst maintaining a finite uh, bulk modulus. This means you can uh, distort them easily whilst uh, maintaining its almost identical volume. They are solids that behave like fluids. The, the classic pontimetric, sorry, I just looked at the time, I know I'm running out of time. Uh, the classic uh, um, pentamode strut uh, on the left um, articulates around its point, and on the right, our improved strut achieves the same um, pentamode behavior through the uh, constant diameter, but by adding flexibility um, and, and uh, increasing um, material at the ends allows for rotation, as can be seen here. Utilizing fluid-like uh, nature of classic uh, isotropic pentamodes, we produce a uh, um, conceptual design that would be, um, would be fluid enough to accommodate various um, forms of head sizes, uh, but uh, auxit being auxitic, uh, uh, protective enough to, for a construction worker's helmet. Uh, using this pentamode ability to divert sound, the helmet was designed to also um, cover the ears, thus having a protect, uh, um, potential to protect the user from damaging frequencies associated with uh, construction sites and industrial workplaces. So the paradigm shift to um, uh, 3D printing with voxel pixels, uh, with 3D pixels. By printing through um, voxels on the surface, uh, this uh, example um, shown here has a variation in color. But when applied to the volume of this sphere, um, it contains half a billion uh, voxels, all potentially programmable. The um, flexible gradient example I showed in the beginning contains 900 million voxels. 
So a staggering amount of programmable data is available within that size. So the big question might be, what are the functional and performative design opportunities of printable uh, metamaterial, uh, materiality at a voxel level? Here, our first wee test um, is very small. Um, but uh, we, uh, we hope to explore some of the much bigger, um, uh, bigger design possibilities uh, as one of the uh, eight universities in the worldwide um, uh, in the world taking part in the Stratasys um, program of voxel research. Right, I better leave it there because I know I'm running out of time. I will just I just flick through to um, the, the doing stuff with the National Science Challenging all around biopolymers, uh, which is really really interesting. So we've got um, interest going on and research that I can't show you in that area. In many ways, that research is actually more applicable applicable to this conference. Um, and I would encourage you to visit our made websites to see the. Um, to full length videos. Um, and lastly, um, I was actually next door, and I think this is, and I took a photograph of this from the wall next door uh, from the exhibition, and it's a really nice uh, commentary for this, uh, um, uh, this conference. Thank you very much.